Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton and welcome to a video about black holes. Now, I've done these videos before and I've actually talked about black holes previously. And so I decided to actually talk about a very interesting speculation and possibly explain a little bit more to you using a bit of space geometry and a kind of a visual representation of what black holes are all about and what might be actually happening inside of them. So we're going to be using a combination of um, Explain Everything, which is an app I use for an iPad and a beautiful black hole video that you see in the background. So let's just start with a little bit of mathematics. And here I'm just going to kind of just draw something you might be familiar with. This is called um, a space plane where we basically have three dimensions. Now, most of you, I think, are familiar with this idea. So you have um, actually this is not Y. This is Y. X, Y, and Z direction. And this is what our space kind of looks like. This is what how our space is represented. And this is where we are all located. So I can actually draw a little person here in 3D space. This is what we would refer to as 3D space. Now we're going to be talking about space time. And to talk about space time, we actually need to possibly get rid of some of these dimensions just to make it a little bit more visually comprehensible. So let's just uh, try this again. I'm going to go to a new slide here. And this time we're going to change the three dimensions into, first we're gonna change them into four dimensions. So we're gonna have a dimension of time as well because that is what space time is. Space time has actually four dimensions. And here we're going to start getting rid of um, the three dimensions that we have for space. And this is just to make it a little bit easier. You may have actually seen a picture that look, looks something like this, where you, you kind of have an object in two dimensions where it bends the space time. But instead of using two dimensional space, I'm actually going to go into one dimensional space because it's a lot easier to imagine things that way. So imagine that this is actually this. So inside of this, there's actually three dimensions. And uh, so we have uh, this dimension for space, and then we have this dimension for time. So we have time and we have space. Now, hopefully so far, this is pretty easy. Now, the interesting thing about the space-time dimension, uh, or I guess the space-time axis here, is that we can freely move through space. We can basically go anywhere we want in three dimensions. But in terms of time, we're always pointing in one direction. We're always falling through time in one direction. This is essentially how time um, passes, right? So we're all familiar with the idea of you know passage of time. And obviously it's a concept that is uh, difficult to explain, but uh, it's in everyday life. And so why are we even doing this? Well, because when you actually start changing space, when you affect space by putting something massive in the middle, you will actually affect time as well. Now, this is often represented in two dimensions, but this is why I decided to get rid of that second dimension because it will make it a little bit easier. So imagine right here in this space, I put an object right here in the middle. And this is basically, let's just say it's some sort of a planet. Uh, it doesn't really look planetary just yet. Let's make it a little bit more planetary looking. And so here is a planet in space. This planet will act on space time and will create this kind of a bump right here, the bump of space. It will essentially fold space and create um, a bit of a dis disruption here uh, or distortion, I guess you could call it. And so even though right in this area and in this area, time passes normally, this is normal passage of time, right in this bump, it is actually going to pass a little bit differently. It's going to be kind of slower. So for example, maybe 10 seconds in this area and 10 seconds in this area would actually be only like 9.999. But let's just say this is a massive planet. So let's just say it's going to be eight seconds here. So the time actually starts passing slower for the person in that particular, uh, on the surface of this planet. So for a little person that is on this planet. So if this person right here and another person right here are actually twins, and if you basically take, your tw take this twin outside of this planet and let him stay in this area, and then take the other twin and put him on the planet, with time, uh, the green twin is basically going to be younger than the blue twin. 
And uh, this is something we've observed um, in real life. This is actually something that we need to be aware of when launching satellites. And also, uh, this is something that uh, is or has been proven many times. This is essentially Einstein's theory of relativity. But let me just show you what uh, this actually looks like uh, in, in terms of realism. So let's just say we're going to need to place the planet here again, because the actual um, folding of space is a little bit different. So the folding starts from outside of the planet. So here space starts folding as you approach the planet, and it's going to be the highest at the surface of the planet. So right here, there's going to be two points where the fold is going to be the strongest. This is where the passage of time is the slowest. And it's the same on both sides. But the thing is, in the center of this planet, the gravity is actually, it's very, very, it's basically non-existent because you get um, the attraction from all sides, equal attraction from all sides. So here, right in the center, it, the, the passage of time is going to be regular. But up to that point, we have this kind of a curve. So this is what a space curve would look like um, as you approach the planet and as it essentially is being folded by the gravity or by the mass of this particular planet. And so that's essentially how massive uh, objects um, affect the space-time. But obviously, when it comes to black holes, and here we need to kind of change this a little bit, I'm going to just draw a very massive object first. This is not a black hole, I'll just say this is like a neutron star. Um, a very massive object is, is going to affect the space even more. So the space here will bend or fold even higher and then, basically, well, this is a horrible picture, but you get the idea. Uh, here, the passage of time is actually going to be even more extreme. So, on, this, um, on the surface of this neutron star, the time here will actually be very, very, very slow. So, here, a regular time of 10 seconds might actually become something like 0.5 seconds. So time will be much, much slower. And as the object becomes more and more massive, so if this is suddenly even more massive, the time will obviously start decreasing as well. So if you were to actually stand on the surface of a neutron star for like, I don't know, 10 seconds of your time, if you were to leave the surface of this neutron star and come to the real world, you would realize that something like thousands and millions of years have passed. But at some point, you reach such a high gravity and such high bending or folding of space-time that you create something called a black hole. And this is where things get really, really creepy or scary. The fold becomes so powerful that it just kind of goes into the extreme of space. So there's really nothing here on the bottom. And this is what a black hole would be. So the time here would slow down and slow down and slow down and slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down until it's essentially stopped completely. Now, is it actually stopped? Is it actually going to be stopped completely or does something else happen here? Well, the speculation that I've heard about and I kind of sometimes think about as well is that, well, what if inside a black hole, uh, time actually reverses with space. Let me just explain to you uh, using another picture here. So before we were talking about the three-dimensional space that has three directions. So before we were talking about the three-dimensional space and with four-dimensional was basically time. And here um, we, had, we can move freely through 3D space and we're always, always falling through time. Always falling through time. Now, what we know about black holes is that once you actually reach uh, the black hole, once once the space becomes really, really stretched, uh, you actually start falling into a single direction. So, in other words, as you stretch the space time, as the space time in one direction becomes stretched, and the other space kind of remains the same, and as the time sort of shortens, which is essentially what happens as you approach the black hole. So these will stretch dramatically and the time will shorten and start passing slower and slower until you kind of reach um, event horizon where the space becomes your only... There's only one direction of space. There's, let's just say x-axis. You always start pointing into the same direction. Uh, all of the other directions disappear. There's not, nothing else left here. But what happens to time? Well, time does stop, but does it though? 
it might actually be a very far-fetched speculation, but what I've actually um, like to think about sometimes is that what if actually they reverse? Because here in the previous example, in this example, we were falling through time and we were able to move through space. But what if, um, we know that in the black hole, we are falling through space. So what happens to time? Maybe we actually are able to then start moving through it in three dimensions of time. Now, that's, that's a trippy idea. Let me just actually redraw this so it makes more sense. But what if, because we're actually falling through this direction of space now, just like we are falling through time right now, we can now, inside the black hole, move through three dimensions of time. Now, what are those three dimensions of time? What exactly does that mean? Well, this dimension is, you know, it's basically future and past. But these other dimensions uh, of time are the so-called parallel time universes. Basically, we can now move through various multiverses that are actually still speculative, but we're almost certain that they do exist. So maybe, just maybe, if you get inside the black hole, you'll actually be able to move through, essentially, uh, through time, through various multiverses, as you're moving through this one direction of space. Now, whether this is actually true and whether this actually makes sense, I don't really know if we'll ever find out because it's a very, very big spe speculation. And if you ever reach this black hole, let me just draw it in a different color. If you reach this black hole, there's nothing telling you if you're ever going to come back to tell the truth to everyone else because maybe just maybe the universe will actually end and you'll find yourself in a completely different multiverse somewhere right here with a completely different set of X and Y axes that you're going to be traveling through now. And anyway, so that's basically all, all I wanted to talk about in this video. It's a very kind of a speculative geometry based video that I wanted to talk about while using Space Engine. Hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends and also possibly like this video and comment about any other ideas that you might have. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your support. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye bye.